between world powers and Iran are underway in Moscow, and the two sides are trying to end a decade-long standoff over Tehran's nuclear program and avoid a possibility, a possibility that we could see war in the Middle East because of this issue. Mark Dubowitz is the executive director of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, and Joe Serencioni is president of the Plowshares Fund and author of Bomb Scare, the History and Future of Nuclear Weapons. So, gentlemen, a lot of questions about whether or not progress can be made in any way uh, with the second round of talks. Mark, what would progress look like? Well, Jenna, I think progress would look like Iran suspending all of its domestic enrichment, coming clean on its nuclear weapons activities, and committing to honor the non-proliferation treaty. I think progress would look like an assurance that Iran is not going to develop nuclear weapons, and I think we're a long way from progress. Uh, Joe, what do you think about that? Would you define progress the same way? Well, that is definitely the end state, but we are a long way from there. This negotiating process is going to take months. We haven't had sustained negotiations with Iran since 2005. Tremendous mistrust on both sides. So what we're looking for in Moscow is incremental steps. Can we get a framework for an original agreement to stop Iran enriching to 20 percent, a very high level, gets it very close to bomb grade, and in exchange can the U.S. offer Iran something in return, perhaps a relief from some of the new sanctions set to go in effect July 1st. And that's right, those sanctions are on oil exports, also on the banking system, so those sanctions really get tougher. Joe, do you think the United States should offer, you know, taking their foot off the accelerator as far as sanctions go, is that something we should consider? I think that's, I think we're going to have to do that. Iran is looking for two things. One, they want to keep their nuclear program going, and they want to get their economy restarted. It's increasingly looking like they can't do both. Their economy is in shambles. Oil exports have dropped 40 percent. Inflation is up 40 percent. Unemployment is going to record highs. So they're looking for some relief, something they can go back and show their people they got a victory. We can't end the sanctions for what Iran is offering right now, which is just initial steps, but we could say, okay, we'll delay some of the sanctions to see if Iran is actually going to implement whatever deal comes out of Moscow. Mark, some would suggest it's the opposite, though, that when you see the sanctions starting to work, that's when you press harder on the accelerator. What are your thoughts? Well, exactly, Jen. I mean, after, you know, 30 years of animosity with Iran, we're not going to build trust and confidence. We hate the regime. They hate us. We finally have leverage. Let is, let's ratchet up the pressure. Let's put Khamenei to a fundamental choice between a nuclear weapon and the survival of his regime. Let's ratchet up these sanctions. On the sanctions dial between 0 and 10 right now, we perhaps are at a 6. We've got to go to 10, or if you're a fan of Spinal Tap, this one's got to go to 11. We've really got to ratchet up the pressure, and we've got to do to Khamenei what uh, we did to Khomeini in the 1980s when he had to drink the so-called poison chalice because he believed the United States was prepared to attack Ar uh, Iran. And we've got to make it very clear that we will declare economic war on this regime. We will bring its economy to its knees. And if that doesn't work, we will bomb Iran's nuclear facilities. That is the message we've got to send. This whole notion of confidence building measures and a process and incremental concessions, <laughs> I think, is a delusion. Well, Joe, and you obviously disagree with that. Some would say we're actually already at economic war with the, uh, the Iranians. What do you think the effect would be to the scenario that Mark lays out, which he says, you know, ratchet these sanctions up to an 11 on a 1 to 10 scale. Yeah, yeah. Sanctions never get you the goal you want all by themselves. This never has. Never worked with any country that's ever been under sanctions. Sanctions are a tool. They're leverage. So you want to get the country to move in this direction. But in order to get the deal, you've got to show that if they do what you want, you will relieve some of that pressure. So that's the, that's the judgment that the diplomats have to make right now. Where's the real stat? When do you go increase it? When do you decrease it? I think what you're seeing now in, in Moscow is that we're still pressing forward, pressing forward. If Iran gives us a step, we're willing to take a step back, mm -hmm. but not you know, take our foot off yeah. the gas. Mark, it's interesting. Joe's making a point about negotiations. If these are negotiations in honest, then aren't negotiations something where one side offers something and another side offers another? So if we're not coming to the table with anything at this point as far as offering them some relief, then are we really no. not negotiating with them like we say we are? Well, Jenna, it's very clear what Iran's obligations are. It's under multiple UN Security Council resolutions, IAEA reports. It's very clear what the Iranians have to do. If they satisfy all of their obligations, then I think we offer concessions. But I think it is a delusion to believe that we can calibrate sanctions. Remember, sanctions are held together by fear. 
It's the fear of U.S. penalties. If we start to offer premature sanctions relief, then all countries and companies will start to act in their self-interest, in their pecuniary self-interest, and the whole sanctions regime will unravel. And I think the negotiators in the Obama administration understand that, and that is why the real important sanctions, the oil market sanctions and the financial sanctions, should only be given at the end, when Iran has satisfied all its obligations all right. under the non-proliferation so, treaty, at the not end, prematurely. At the end, Joe, and you mentioned timeline, and Joe, I'm going to give you the, the, the last thought here. You know, what kind of timeline are we on? If the end is the banking and the oil sanctions, then, then what is the timeline as far as seeing any sort of change in Iran, and, and what is the timeline potentially for a bigger conflict? Well, here's two pieces of good news. One, the Iranian regime is hugely unpopular, and I think it's only a matter of time before the people of Iran do what only they can do and overthrow that regime. Second, although the nuclear program is going forward, it's going forward very slowly. Iran is at least a year, perhaps three years away from being able to make a nuclear device that would work. The time is actually on our side. As months go on, the sanctions are only going to get worse. The pressure only increases. We have to know when to use that lever and when to to get what we really want, which is an end to Iran enriching its uranium to 20%. If we can get that, that's a real gain. We should be willing to give something for it. Joe, Mark, great discussion, a big topic. We look forward to having you both back.